Hey sweeties, how are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sin. If this is your first time of coming across this channel, sweetheart, kindly smash the subscribe button and turn on the notification so you get notified each time I upload. And please give this video a thumb up. I appreciate you all and I want to say a very big thank you to every one of you for always coming back to watch my videos and also subscribing. You are the very best. So today we'll be looking at some things that your ancestors went through. And today we'll be checking out book breaking, right? Before we get into book breaking, I am going to read something to enlighten us about book breaking. I am very sure that some people know a lot about this and some do not know. But then let's get into it. Book breaking, the alleged act of publicly punishing a male slave, typically by forced flogging him and subsequently sexually assaulting or raping him in front of other slaves in order in order order to humiliate him man i have heard it all there is nothing left i mean i have heard it all like how how exactly let's get into the video and see what people are saying about this let's go did you know that black enslaved men also endured sexual violence by both white men and women on the plantation here's a history buck breaking was a practice of sodomizing black enslaved men by the enslaver or other white men for being disobedient or defiant. This practice was meant to humiliate, intimidate, and strip these men of everything. It was also meant to be an example to other enslaved people of what could happen to them or their children if they too were disobedient. What would happen is these men would be stripped naked, tied down, beaten, raped in front of their children, their wives, friends, those other enslaved on the plantation. Sometimes they would be raped by one person or multiple persons, usually friends of their enslavers. White women were also involved in sexual violence against enslaved black men. So they would have sexual relations with these enslaved men and based on power dynamic, this is sexual assault. Sometimes they would end up pregnant and because this is extremely shameful or would have been for them, their family, their husbands, they typically had abortions. This is history not shared, it's not talked about, but these are things that have happened. Okay, now there is something that I want to say and it's if I ever hear any, if I ever see anybody write anything like it's been a long time this happened, move on. If I see this kind of comment on my com in my comment section, I am definitely going to block the person. Now let's talk about this. When they keep saying move on, it's been a long time it happened. I want you all to know that the trauma, do you know what, I mean, the trauma never leaves. You can imagine a man with family, I mean, his wife, the children, strip him naked and humiliate him in front of every other person. God, where were you when, oh, I am sorry, sorry, I am asking this question, but I want to know. Oh my goodness. I am just done. I am just done. This is so sick. This is very, very so like, this is not what a human being does. Like, not this. How can a human being, I mean, somebody with flesh, with blood, do this to his fellow man? This is wickedness on the highest level. If you know what I say, wickedness on the highest level. Wickedness on the highest level. Let's get into the stitches and see what people got to say about this. Here we go. Okay, TikTok, for the week of Juneteenth, we're going to be discussing different slavery 
myths that people don't know a lot about. We're going to start with buck breaking because this is the one that I saw the most. Pause to read. Pause to read. And pause to read. So to give a brief rundown of all that, essentially buck breaking was basically a person who would take a slave and basically humiliate them and rape them in front of everybody. It was a way to get rid of rebellion or defiance in male slaves specifically. The reason that this post mentions male slaves specifically is because male, male rape was not talked about during that time. And with females, it was way more often. This is why we scream Black Lives Matter. These are some of the things in slavery that we talk about when we mention slavery. And it's a shame that a lot of people don't know about that. Because after the fact, those men would usually just run away and feed themselves to alligators or just kill themselves. Trigger warning. Have you ever heard of buck breaking? If you haven't, go look it up. Ah, what the hell? Buck breaking is a sexual act done to colored males back in slavery. Where it was a form of punishment, right? And that's the short definition. I want you to think about something. I'm sitting in the kitchen baking. And it's come across my mind that... Watching a lot of documentaries, um, watching a lot of um, series of new shows that have come out dealing with some form of slavery. They hit on how white slave owners, the male, were extremely gay. Keep that in mind now while I tell this story. Because I really want you to think about this. So, did you have to punish colored men sexually because they didn't do what you wanted them to do you beat the crap out of them you broke them that way you killed some of them when you couldn't break them now i think it was a little overkill to have sex with them right as i run this thought through my head <laughs> it dawns on me that they were feeling a need for themselves. It has, it didn't have anything to do with book breaking in a sense. These same white slave owners were, were and have always been gay and they were attracted to men in general. Hey, my brothers and sisters, blessings to you. Have you heard of buck busting a buck? breaking well let me tell you about it it was used against black male slave who was seen as defiant the process involved the slave owner forcing the enslaved to lower his pants and bend over a tree stump or to lay flat on the ground with their arms tied to a stick and into the ground that's where the slave couldn't move then the enslaved will be fogged severely then he would have his way with them this was done in front of their family in front of their friend where some of the slave was very embarrassed by this and sometimes the slave was so embarrassed that he killed himself like for part two blessings hey y'all y'all ready for more things in american history that we just don't talk about and pretend it never happened have you ever heard of buck breaking Warning, proceed with caution. Buck breaking was sexual violence against enslaved black men. As a form of punishment, slave masters or just white supremacists would commit sexual violence against um, an enslaved man in front of his family, his friends, the entire town as a way to not only dehumanize, but to humiliate him in front of everybody. The slave would be tied up, flogged, and then R-A-P-E-D'd. Sometimes the slave owner would emasculate the man himself, or sometimes he would have uh, a male slave do it to another male slave. As a result, of course, many of the men who were violated could not or had a hard time returning back or socializing with their family and friends. So they would either commit suicide or run away and never come back. And once again, the black male was removed from the household. And although this was more popular in the Caribbean, yes, it did happen in the United States too. Like and follow for more. Buck breaking is the alleged act of publicly punishing a male slave. 
typically by first flogging him and subsequently raping him and assaulting him in front of other slaves in order to humiliate him. The purpose of this video is to unpackage why so many people believe the history of butt breaking is the origins of homosexuality or same gender loving people in our community. They this simplistically, just like a man being intimately taken advantage of by another man in the prison industrial complex makes them a victim of assault and not gay, that's the same thing that applies to the history of butt breaking. The etymology of butt breaking comes from the concept of breaking a horse and even in the animalistic metaphor. Taking advantage of a horse would not make it switch its sexuality. Again, you would just be assaulting a horse. When it comes to recognizing the uniqueness of sexual exploitation in our community, you got to make sure you're not just projecting that on to individuals because they're gay or because they don't conform to the way that you believe their sexuality should conform. Because that's when you start engaging into those white supremacy ratios and ain't nobody got time for that, really. A straight man tries to take advantage of a stud and humiliate her in front of the rest of her stud friends, that does not change her gender. It probably adds a lot of psychological violence and trauma on her, but it does not change her gender. Brings me back to the concept of bug breaking. This is pictures of pharaohs. In today's time, we consider those skirts, correct? Well, we define their masculinity based off their garments and say that Babylon was taking them down because they were wearing skirts. See how crazy that sounds? And this is what the ancient Hebrews wore, huh? This is what the man dressed in. In today's time, when we consider this a big old dress, what am I getting at? I'm getting at how so many men, especially black men, start to define yourself and your manhood and masculinity based off Western conceptions of what it means to be a man. And you start putting a whole bunch of beef on pants. This is what they're supposed to have dressed like in the, you know what I'm saying, the Bible. You feel me? This is what Moses part the Red Sea in. A, a skirt like, a dress like this. What does that have to do with bug breaking some ass? The symbolism of a man putting on a dress somehow makes him unmanly. And that is a new notion of manifestation of bug breaking. Not all, but a lot of y'all that love evoking this concept of bug breaking, y'all love equating this concept to the mere presence of black people in the LGBT community, especially when they are men. A lot of y'all get so lost in the sauce of Western notions of manhood that you start to justify literally erasing other people's presence because they are man and gay because, hey, that must be a sign of bug breaking. Think about it in its most simplistic forms. A lot of people would negotiate the masculinity of gay men because they are gay. How is that not emasculating? Or do you believe that gay men are automatically emasculated? Man, you only gay because somebody took advantage of you. You probably only gay because you was abused. Only got gay in the community because of bug breaking. Production is statements. Education is elevation, man. <clears throat> Are they still pretending that all this did not happen? Or are they still looking for a way to like, you know, wipe away CRT? What exactly are they pretending? Why are they pretending? They are pretending that all this never happened. No one, like, no wonder they said um, Black history violates their law. I mean, why won't it violate their law? Because they knew what they did. Hi. Now, let me tell you all something. The first education a child gets is from the parents. I mean, what you teach your child, they may end, they will end up, or they may end up not forgetting it. They grow up to say, oh, I remember when my father or when my mother told me about this particular thing that happened. I remember most of the things my father told me about history. I still have them here till this very day. So try as much as you can as parents to enlighten your children because if you don't enlighten them who will education is elevation so try as much as you can to teach them the history they are saying it violates their law this is where i'm going to call it a day see you all in my next video bye for